And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is David James Bruce, who's had a near-death experience, pre-birth experiences, and helped his dying girlfriend heal by contacting God. David, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I look forward to it. Well, David, let's start with your NDE and go from there. Yeah, so when I was three years old, I got the pneumonia real bad and was sent to the Pittsburgh hospital. By the time it got real bad, we drove there. We were a couple hours from Pittsburgh. So we get there. I don't remember much about it except for that I was really sick, didn't feel good. And then when we were in the hospital room, a being came into the room, was helping me and just making me feel better and loving me. And I told my mother and the nurses about her and they couldn't see her, but I was communicating with her and she just loved me and I got better. And because I was so young, that's about the details, the extent of it. Do you remember what she looked like? Yes. So she had very dark skin. And I would say like a, probably from about 3,000 something years ago, if I had to guess, put a best bet on the complexion. So you had pneumonia. Do you know if you actually stopped breathing or something like that? No, I don't think I stopped breathing. I just think I was right there on the brink. Uh, just because I was so young and the pneumonia had gotten so bad. Do you know if you were outside of your body at the time? Again, I don't. You know, I I would like to say yes, but I was so young. I don't know if that's just what I want it to be. Right. So I'm hesitant. Right. So you had the NDE. Did the pre-birth memories come next or did you have them already before it happened? Yes. So that's a great question that I'm still trying to connect through my research because I was so young. Some of my first memories was of my dad flying me in the air, you know? And then after that, I've always had my pre-birth experiences since I was a child and that I can remember, but I can't tell you if they're before that or if they're after that, just because I was so young. But I don't think it matters because the only fact that matters is that I remember them and that I'm using them for my higher self. And that's really what I've taken from it thus far. And it's been so beneficial. So what exactly do you remember about your pre-birth experiences? So with my pre-birth experiences, I remember being in this big white void with another being choosing my body and choosing my parents and also being able to see what my body might look like depending on how I treated it. And when I say this, it's hard to communicate because I think we're so much more of advanced where we come from, where I had those pre-birth experiences than we are here. I heard uh, someone say it on your podcast last night. It's like putting the universe of information into a small cup. You know, it's very hard to communicate, but I know that the data was so astronomical and it all depended on what I did on where I ended up in that timeline or whatever outcome I came to. So I always remember that. And I also remember being jovial, joking around about the process, like, and past times going with this other being so i always remember that growing up whenever there's a tough time i tried to you know keep it funky keep it you know jovial have fun in life but also i know that when it's all said and done any wrongdoings the truth will come out to that you know so i've dealt with a lot of crap in my life and that's how i've been able to deal with it And I also think that's how I've been able to jump out of that such low vibe underworld drug world that I put myself back into because 
I utilize those experiences, if that makes sense. It's, it was a gift. Do you recall why you came here? I think just to experience. Because, and the reason I say that is I remember all of that data and what my life and what my body might look like depending on how I treated it. None of them were set in stone. But if that's the case, then it doesn't matter. It's just to experience any of those outcomes, right? So I don't think that, I think there's free will. I don't think there's predestiny. And if there is, I would say there's free will with that. Because I have people from and friends that have pre-birth experiences, people that have shared on our project that have both, and then others that have both of those both. And one thing I try to do is keep an open mind, right? Because my memories are fragmented, and they're not that detailed like Christian Sundberg, who shared amazingly detailed experience. Several other people out there. So I. I keep that in mind, you know, keep an open mind. Um, let's figure out everybody's experiences. I don't think anyone should look at this, look at my experience and say, that's how my pre birth experience has to be. Cause that's how David was, but that's how Christians was. No, nah, dude, go with your root. What you know is true inside. Fuck everyone else. And once you start speaking your truth, you'll figure it out. It'll come together. So that's what I'm doing. This is really a, my life project, all the research I've been doing, this growth started for me, started to answer my questions, and it grew into helping other people, which really is this newfound energy I was blind to most of my life. Do you feel that you have a purpose now? Yes, 100%. 100% my mission is to help people with pre-birth experiences, near-death experiences, healing, and any other UFOs experiences, any spiritual experience. If I can be a friend to them, help them realize their truths and talk about it, that's going to react with other people. It's going to set off that chain reaction. It's going to help other people, which helps me. That's what I realized during this short period of time. When I help other people, I sprout and grow into this something I never knew I was. And it's been happening so much lately, and I've been given so many gifts from beyond riches. I don't have any money in my pocket right now, and I've been given so many gifts beyond riches this past since my spiritual awakening as an adult when I found my girlfriend. Do you recall what the being looked like in your pre-birth experience? I recall communicating, like I said, a huge amount of data with this being. I think it was more of a light being. But one thing I do recall is when we were communicating together, whatever we communicated, we could see in front of us. And when I was a kid, so I was born in 84. When I was a kid and I grew up in flat screens first came out and people put them on the wall in a row, I went, oh, that's sort of the closest thing I could communicate what I saw when communicating with that being. So I think what that was, was anything that we communicate, think, say, whatever you want to put it, manifests itself in a reality there. So instantly, Boom, boom, boom. And we can see anything going on here, too. And obviously, I could see anything that might play out, but it wasn't set in stone. <laughs> it all depend on how I moved and grew through this life. All right, well, let's move forward and talk about what happened to your girlfriend. Yes. So, skip forward. I went throughout my whole life not talking about this stuff, other than with my mother when I was young. And I lived a pretty rough, rough and tough life in the underworld. And then I got clean when I got, had a, got older and had a kid. And then my dad died and I started using again. But anyways, a couple years later, one of my buddies trying to wake me up. I go on and try to wake her up and she's dead. She's out. She's gone. Lips are blue. She's cold. 
hitting her with Narcan, hit her with three Narcans, CPR, and she starts gurgling at best. And the ambulance gets there, takes her down to the hospital. We get down there. It's just me and her parents in a room because it's during COVID, so we couldn't go back there yet. The doctor comes in and says, she ain't going to make it. You know, and if she does, she'll probably have really bad brain damage because she was out so long without oxygen, right? Dude, I get up and I leave. I refuse to, something just clicked. And I refuse to hear it. I refuse to believe it. I came home, went upstairs into my spot by myself and literally poured my heart out to God and said, if you hear me, please heal her and I'll stop, I'll stop shooting dope. And literally, I could feel and see light energy from me and from the sky and going to her. And she was way far the hell away from me. I couldn't see the hospital from my house, but I could see this and feel this. And then a couple minutes after, I get a call, someone from the hospital saying, hey, you can come down. Well, I didn't give them my phone number. I found out her parents didn't give them my phone number. I get down there to the front desk. Like I said, it was COVID. You couldn't just get in, right? And uh, they said, go ahead. We didn't call you, but go ahead back. So, bam, another sign, right? I go back. She hasn't responded it by now. This is the first night she was in. So they don't know what's going to happen, you know? I go in there. I start talking to her and rubbing her hand and comforting her and giving her love. And she responds, dude. Not talking, obviously. She was really messed up. But she opened her eyes and she started getting activity and, you know, doctors running and they started doing all of her thing on her. Well, she was in ICU for about a month. Dialysis, collapse young, uh, breathing tube, heart was f***ed up. It wasn't, valves weren't opening right, all kinds of issues. And she started healing. Well, this whole time, see... I was a drug addict, and I would play with words. So when I talked to God, I said, I'll stop shooting dope. But once she started healing, I did stop shooting dope, but I was still shooting meth and taking Xanax and whatever, you know? But she started healing. So I said, wait a minute. Never mind, you know, this is sort of crazy. And she's about to get out, dude. She's about to be let out the next day. And... My addictions kicked back into play. I had a shot of dope on me. I went to the bathroom, loaded it up. Bloop! Went back to the room. I'm like, man, am I high, dude? Because she's acting funky. Well, she had a f***ing seizure about a minute later. Almost died several times. Bam, back up in the ICU for another couple months. But she, at that point, I knew something was going on. So when I went home that night, I was like, look, if this is real, show me a sign. And boom, bam, a shooting star went right across in front of me, dude. So, and I could feel it. I knew it was real. So I quit, man. I quit shooting dope. You know, started taking methadone treatment seriously so I could stage down off that shit and started to get clean, stopped shooting mess, stopped doing everything except for smoking weed, which I use as a tool to get off all the other drugs. But she started healing. And not like the time before where she was going to leave and still had to have dialysis probably for the rest of her life. Who knows? Dude, she healed completely. No dialysis. She got off dialysis completely. Learned to walk again. And is healthier than ever. Was a drinker, drug user her entire life. She's clean now. I'm clean now. Um, Our families are better. It was amazing. I witnessed a f***ing miracle. And... It changed everything about me and made me start come out and of the closet per se and start my project on researching cataloging pre-birth experiences called Being Before the Veil. And that's really you know, I've been on this like ascension growth path since then, man. Just taking in all this data and information that beautiful, wonderful people like you and other shows gave me. And I found a community and I I I started taking this seriously and knew it was real and started watching my words and watching my thoughts and started channeling 
and connecting with my higher self and astral traveling. And I'm just a different person now, man. I, I, it's amazing. I love it. I need to quit saying I need to watch those words. <laughs> but yeah, so it really was a beautiful thing. And, and then it was amazing. It's the most fascinating thing I've seen in this life. During all this, did your girlfriend have an NDE? She, I call her a death experience because of how I found her, but she definitely had an NDE. But all that she said to me about it so far is that she just remembers being very peaceful and that she's not afraid of death anymore. And this woman used to call the ambulance to our house. She'd be so freaked out on anxiety from drugs and whatnot, and that she thought she was going to die. She's not afraid of death anymore. And, and it's a beauty. It's, she's just trance. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you think that, or did she say anything about how the healing came to her from you? Like, does she have any this awareness very, of that? This, I'm so glad you brought that up because I don't want people to hear my story and say it was because he healed her. No, bro. When she woke up, she knew she was going to heal. Everyone, her parents didn't come in there and give her shit. And like, you know what I'm saying? Was negative to her. No, they came in there, gave her love, knew she was going to heal. Anyone that came in that room was trying to help her heal, was helping her heal. And she knew she was going to heal and she healed. And I think that's what it really is. If you know you're going to heal, everyone around you loves you and knows you're going to heal. You have everything you need to heal yourself and to get the power you need from elsewhere as well. Since all this has happened, are you now in communication with your guides? Yes, hugely, yeah. So about, it took me a long time to learn to meditate. I couldn't sit still. I'm a mover, man. I tear up the carpet, always have been. Um, so meditating came really hard for me, but I always found my peace in the water. So I started taking baths and meditating and I started to learn to meditate. And this was after her, her experience. And then I started, I was like, man, I want to learn to actual travel now. And I started using the Monroe focus tapes with earbuds in the tub with hot water. I dipped my feet in first, let the heat rise up through my body while I listen to those tapes, man, dude, I started actual traveling. And after about two weeks, I didn't even need the tapes anymore. And then I grew that into astral traveling while driving in the car and walking and working out and playing basketball. And not like just sitting there with my eyes closed the whole time trying to play basketball. No, really doing something and then closing my eyes, astral travel, jumping in and out. It comes naturally. I'm doing it while skateboarding. So my theory is if we can do this while we're doing any activity. If a near-death experience comes or real fearful experience, you can jump into that state to transform it and not it not affect you. That's amazing that you started doing it in the bathtub. I wonder if yes. Monroe Institute is aware of that. And if not, I think you should tell them because I think they would find it fascinating. Yes, I've, I've uh, screamed it on their comment board, but I don't think any of the big dogs have seen it yet. Y'all paying attention? Let's talk. No, I'm saying <laughs> So you're able to astral travel while doing things consciously, like you said, driving, playing basketball. Can you tell? Well, not driving, ride, riding in the car. Okay, riding in the car, playing basketball. Can you tell us what that traveling is like while you're conscious? Like, what are you doing? Well, to get outer, I closed my eyes. I still had to close my eyes to do it, right? And then when I open my eyes, it's like I jump right back in, but I'm able, what I've learned to do is be able to shoot out, jump uh, in and out very fast. And at first I was only going up to the source where I came from, but now I've been learning to go anywhere I want around here and communicate with other beings. Um, at first I was completely ignoring all that. So I didn't know if I could trust, you know, these beings if I needed to like, anyways, it's just my fears. I was new to it. But um, 
yeah, after doing that, you start learning and you start becoming comfortable and just go with it. There's no restrictions. You can do anything in that world, dude. You can jump out and split and be astraling in two bodies and even more. Like, yeah. And um, what started all this, the first time I'd say I channeled and had like an outer body experience where I was channeling, one of my spirit guys gave me my two astral swords back. And they didn't give them to me. They said they presented them back to me. So basically, I had them the whole time. I just forgot. And what this is, all this is, is my tool to transform all the negativity that I've been programmed with and that I've stacked up myself through the years of drug use and, you know, living in that underworld. It's taking all of that that I have built up inside of me and clearing it and be able to transform it into energy that I want to use. And it works. And you have those tools inside you too. You just got to remember and find them and be represented with them as well. Or whatever you're, there's many roads to the same place. There's no set way. We all can have our own little twisty ways to get there. Do you see these beings when you're traveling? And if so, what do they look like? It depends on what beings. So the first beings I communicated with that weren't my spirit guides showed up. One showed up as an owl and the other showed up as a scribe. And then another one has like this big triangle body, huge. And he's some friend of mine that I knew either on the other side or where I came from or another life. I haven't got there yet. Again, this is all very new. I just came out publicly about channeling a couple of weeks ago. You know what I mean? So I'm learning too. But the point is, if I can do it with all the rap I went through and all the negativity I had stacked up in here, any of y'all can. Who are you channeling? I'm channeling source, God at first, and my higher self. That's why I first started was my higher self, really. And then I started feeling comfortable enough to channel and talk with source. But really, um, my spirit guides, I have three that I talk to on a regular basis, but more coming in. I had a healing the other day where I saw Jeshua and Mary for the first time, you know? But Michael presented me with my swords back. Gabriel killed my, helped heal my girlfriend. When you- So I know there's a lot. There's the, the girl, the woman that's been with me from the beginning that helped heal me as a kid. She's always been there. I know, cause I could feel her. I could feel her <laughs> getting upset when I was like 13 going out and robbing people and doing drugs, you know what I mean? And then, then stopped talking to her because I felt ashamed. I could feel that disconnection. And, that, and the reconnection is awesome. It's beautiful. They'll, they always love you. I felt ashamed. They don't care. They're loving me. And they, they're happy that I'm back. I don't have to have shame with them. Can you talk about how these astral travel experiences are different from drug experiences? Oh my God. There's no comparison. There's no comparison. I've done DMT, I've acid. I mean, my whole high school was tripping on acid from ninth to freaking 11th grade. The whole high school almost. I mean, there might have been your exceptional few, but G Town was wild which is Garner, North Carolina. Um, but all those experiences, as powerful as they were, they weren't... I couldn't get to them anytime I wanted to, like I can with these experiences, and they're not as real as these experiences. I've had a couple times where I thought a trip was real, but it was a bad trip. It was just a negativity, and that's why I thought it was real. It's none of this... None of these drug experiences are as real as I feel doing this stuff or as fascinating as it is, of course, how truthful and what the feeling I get inside. That feeling I've been chasing my whole life with drugs, and I never knew that it was inside of me. I just had to reconnect to it and find out how to use it. And that's what I do now. 
dude, I shoot up way higher than I ever could on dope or any drug, you know? And I see things and feel things I could have never seen or felt while on drugs. And I'm so much healthier. And I don't have to feel like shit afterwards or go deal with some scumbags that are trying to f me over. You know what I mean? I think you would be a great person to help people get off of drugs. Have you ever considered that? Yes, I've, I've been getting that a lot lately. And my, so I'm growing this, my project, but my YouTube channel. And I'm like, well, there's only so many people with pre-birth experiences. And I started going out and I started meeting people that either coming off drugs or on drugs with unique experience, spiritual experiences. So I really do think that's my next mission is going out, connecting with these people about their experiences and talking about them and letting them know it's okay. And that, once they figure that out for themselves, they won't need help getting off drugs. Like, you know, they will, but you know what I mean? They're going to do it themselves. That's going to be the power. That's going to be the answer when they realize it's them and their truths. See, we're so scared of everything. We're trying to find something that feels right because we're in so much fear. And we can never find it. We only get close to it there. You know, we felt it that first time. We felt a little bit of it the first time. That's why we chase it. Because we're just trying to get back to it. And it's there. We just have to realize we've done a lot of damage. So we got to do a little f***ing work, man. And you can get there. And I'm a prime example of that. And I'm going to try to do my best to continually grow and see what comes of it. I know that I'm a hundred times different and better than I was two years ago. I know I'm in a different timeline. I know I'm a different person, but I know I'm the same person too. So I do think that's my next calling. And actually I've been working on it. I just had to get the, we got to get the video equipment to go out on the streets, the mics, all that stuff, which I'm not a millionaire yet. So. When you astral travel, do you ever look back and see your body lying or sitting there? I can look at my body. I can look at other people. But that's something I've been working on and going down. At first, I was just going up, trying to get to where I came from and figure stuff out. Now I've realized to go down and go around the earth and look around here more. You know, because that's really what the experience is, right? I can shoot away from here all the time and go up to my comfort place. But I'm here to experience and do stuff here. So, yes, I'm working on that. Um, uh, yeah, I can see my body. Yes. You said your girlfriend doesn't fear death. Do you? No. No. And I never, even though I had a lot of fear growing up, I always put myself in situations where, let me give you an example. When I was like a younger kid, this, this, this guy was beating the out of me. I was letting him do it. And we were going for probably a couple hours. And I just kept following him back to his house. There was a big snowstorm, so I just kept following him and antagonizing him because he beat my ass, right? So I was like, do it. I'm going to keep going, motherfucker. I'm not done. And he finally quit, and I said, you lost because I'm still living. So I've always sort of had this. I wasn't, really, I was always sort of never really feared death, but I was also a human with fears, you know, and want to live. But now, after all this, no, I look forward to it. Please, if you must. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I know what I'm going to go to. Your project is called Being Before the Veil. What are you doing with that project? Yes, yeah, so we're cataloging and helping people with pre-birth experiences. It's really simple. If you have a pre-birth experience, you go on there, fill out a simple form. We review it, and we post it to the running number. My first thing after that spiritual experience was I got to find out how many others there are. So far, I've found 31 others that have shared on beingbeforetheveil.com. And one thing I want to say is if you have some kind of situation where you can't, 
You don't want to put your name out there. You don't want to put your face out there. You can be anonymous and still help people. The more we share, the more we talk about this, the more people are going to be helped. And it's just going to start a chain reaction, man. And that's how we change this world. We help ourselves talk about it. People are going to see. They're going to feel it. And they're going to want it. And they're going to seek it. So that's really why I'm doing this. And your website's called beingbeforetheveil.com? Yes, sir. Can people go to your website and read about other people's pre-death experiences? Yes. So you can go there and read everybody's experience that is shared that hasn't shared anonymously, which is just a couple. So everyone else, you can read their experiences in their own words. And then you can also go to the forum page and see all the answers. I'm growing the website right now, actually, to automate it, to get more metrics and data and information and provide more metrics to the public. Right now, it's really simple and basic, but that's okay. It needs to be at first. But we're going to grow this thing. I'm going to automate it. So hopefully, it's running long after I leave this vessel. And maybe I can even come back and share again and possibly even connect them. You never know. Have you noticed any patterns between people's pre-death experiences so far? Yes and no. Some really cool things that I never expected when I started this project have came about, which is really what gets me excited. Like hearing my friends or people talk about in utero, I never thought about that because I didn't have those pre-birth experiences. But then I hear them and I'm like, oh crap, dude, Nirvana in utero. Kurt Cobain could have had them, bro. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just, I love finding stuff out like that and trying to connect the dots. And there are a lot of stuff that aligns with our experiences. Some people have more free will experiences. Some people have more where they knew exactly how it was going to play out experiences. Some people both. Um, A lot of people remember seeing what their body might look like depending on how they treated it, which I think is awesome because that really lets us know, hey, it's up to you. It's up to what you create, what you say, and what you put out in this world. That's what I think about it. But again, if you have a pre-birth experience, don't listen or go read theirs or listen to other people's and say, my pre-birth experience has to be like this when I go share. No, share yours to your fullest truth because that's really how you're going to help everyone and yourself and me. And we're going to find out so many amazing things from everybody telling their truths. Years down the road, AI could be pulling all this data we never even thought about to look at. So uh, that's another thing I'm going to try to automate it, run it with AI when I get money to do that. Do you think that your initial use of drugs has anything to do with your NDE or knowing about your pre-birth experiences? (laughs) Yes. For me, yeah, because... And it's hard to explain that. Yes, I do. I've been thinking about that, and I do think it does... And I think it does in a weird way, though, because I knew no matter what, I was going to be okay. So I wanted to experience it. And also, I've been thinking a lot lately, you can't slingshot to the furthest, most magnificent light and experience unless you're down in the lowest, darkest, right? So, dude, I I thrived in that world. I know I can thrive in that world. So it's shit to me now. So it's, I'm bouncing back up. Well, after watching this podcast, someone may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Of course, a hundred percent. And I'm looking to collaborate. Um, being before the You can go on there. My email is at the bottom. You can also share, please share if you have a pre-birth experience. I don't make any money off that site. It's free. It's to help people and to help me. And it's going to help you if you share. Guarantee it. Please do. David, what's the name of your YouTube channel and what kind of videos are you posting there? 
Thank you. Being Before the Veil is the name of my YouTube channel. And my first interview, John of New interviewed me. The next two interviews, I interviewed people that shared pre-birth experiences on beingbeforetheveil.com. My fourth one was with Alan Steinfeld. And now I have wonderful Just podcast. And my plan is to go on as many as I can and interview as many people as I can with pre-birth experiences, as well as go out in the streets and try to find people with spiritual experience. Talk about, I think that's really going to be a cool niche. And if you have, if you want to do this, go do it. We need millions of us. David, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Live in love. Try, try to get rid of all the negative fear that we stack up and you'll automatically start realizing how to live in love. David, thank you for that message. And thank, thank you, you for being my guest. Thank you, brother. You, you're awesome. Love so, you, man. Thank, thank you. you. You so are you and I love you too. Thanks, brother. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.